Welcome to Big Oz Explorers. We've been touring in a caravan for over a year now and have learned a lot about how to manage in a tiny home while traveling around Australia. I'm Sean, and this is Chris, and our kids, Jada and Jack. Follow our family and live van life through our eyes while we take you on the trip of a lifetime around Australia's hotspots. Click the subscribe button to join our adventure every Thursday and stay up to date with everything Big Oz. What are we doing? <laughs> Tell everyone what's going on, Christopher. I'm doing something that not everyone likes to go to and do. I'm at the dentist and I'm potentially very highly going to get my wisdom tooth pulled out. I'm not very happy about it. <laughs> I'm actually quietly f***ing myself. Um, yeah. So the rundown is I've basically had all four of my wisdom teeth most of my life. I only had one pulled out well, about five years ago. Um, just due to so much pain and it was ready to come out and I just couldn't take it anymore. Uh, since then I've had no dramas up until now. I've only just started getting a few little tingles in this side on the bottom. And it wasn't until we uh, had a bit I of said, an, Let me look at it. an investigation uh, like a couple of days ago. Yeah. And I realized that I have a humongous bloody hole in the back. Like it's so tucked into the back that I had no idea. Like I'm He's so like anal, anal. Yeah. about your teeth. I'm teeth almost flossing every day. I floss at least once, maybe twice a day. I brush my teeth twice a day. It's just He's been very particular. That's why yeah. he has the pearly whites all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what a lot of people compliment me on my teeth, so I, I take that on board. But yeah, it's for me. It's disappointing that that's in the back there, and it's as bad as what it is. Um, so after what happened with this side. I really want to get this out while we're in a major town uh, before it does get worse because it's only going to get worse and worse and I'd rather not deal with the pain and have to rush around somewhere remote to get it done. So fingers crossed it turns out to be a smooth extraction yeah. with no swelling and just a hole that closes itself over and everything's perfect. Well, the results are in. I made it out alive. I don't know if I'm talking a little bit funny because the, it's, what do you call it? Um, anesthetic. That's the word. Jeez, I'm a nurse and I can't even remember. The numbing oh, stuff yeah. is really kicked in now. So pretty much just, <laughs> I feel, I feel like I'm talking like an idiot. This whole side here is just numb. You put three, three needles into me because I've had past issues where they haven't put enough in. I still felt stuff. He said, no, nah, no, nah, we do three regardless. I was like, thank God for that. So I am proper numb for probably the, uh, the next five hours. So <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Half my tongue's here and <laughs> bloody numb. I said, can I keep the tooth? He said, absolutely, I'll give you the tooth. Because I wanted to show Jada, just because she's so visual and she wants to see everything. And I said, this is a great opportunity to show her why you brush your teeth and how I can destroy them. But that's the tooth right there. Oh, it's too bright. I'll have to do another I don't angle. Know. I don't know if you can see that, but it is huge. We might do some close-ups of this. <laughs> Let's do oh. some close-ups. <laughs> you I can't like, speak. It's I so feel funny. like I'm about to drool. <laughs> <laughs> but it blew me away because I'm so, like we said before, anal about me cleaning it. But wisdom is just so hard to clean. But it's a good little indicator to show you why you clean your bloody teeth. Pulled up at the first servo before we get to a turn off. Uh, it's called Sandfire Roadhouse. It's actually pretty cool. It's got heaps of different signs, like road signs and whatnot. Number plates, and then there's all these hats up top as well. Yeah, plenty of unleaded, so I don't have to worry about that. $1.79.3. Not bad considering it's about the only fuel station you're going to see for probably another few hundred kilometers so turn off to 80 mile caravan park is going to be I think we've got another half an hour or so of driving so yeah not far at all so we shouldn't chew too much going in there and then we can continue back on when we pull out this is just in behind the service station a little fountain Have a look at this first. This is all the different signs and stuff they got. 
super random. It's like they just got given a heap of signs and they couldn't think of what to do with them. Now it's turning like a super quirky sort of setup. Oh, Jack, look! Look at the birdies! Look at the birdies! Look! Look! Look at them all! Look at the flaming glass! Look at them all! Well, it probably explains all the uh, white dots on the ground. <laughs> hey. How cool! <laughs> He's like, I don't know how to feel about this. How cool is that? Dog. What do you want, mate? You want to feed? Hang around like a bad smell, you are. Hmm? So we ended up at 80 Mile Caravan Park. <laughs> We've got absolutely all, like every review, every person we've spoken to just raves about the place. And I can see why, because we've been here now a bit of a, a bit over 24 hours. So we went, we turned up yesterday, and we've now been here overnight, and we're down at the beach today to uh, just have a look around, go driving up the beach, and just see what it's all about. So for here, it's just a typical beachside caravan park. There's got heaps of room, and then all you have to do is a short drive onto the access access road, onto the beach, and it's like not even a minute from the caravan park. And you've got 80 miles of beach to drive on, which is just insane. The water is just as beautiful. The sand is actually really awesome to drive on. It's really hard, compact sand. So I can see why it's a bit of a hot spot for people to just come down and take their cars, go fishing, bring the kids down for a bit of a dip in the water. It's, yeah, it's an actually really cool spot. So yeah, we're just enjoying the, after, the day down here at the beach. I'm doing a bit of exploring. Jada's in the uh, rocks over here checking out stuff. Jack's actually having a bit of a snooze. It's like typical, he fell asleep just before we pulled up. So I'm glad that he's still in the car having a snooze, which is really good. Um, yeah, just gonna enjoy the day. I'll get the drone up and show you around. Go from there. I can't tell you how good it is to come off a beach and have a car wash or a wash down bay ready to go. That is killer. I reckon every beach should have that. I know it's not, it's not possible, but I can't believe that. That is just insane. I have just given this car the best bath of its life. They've basically got this really big black thick hose and there's some decent pressure in it. You just put your finger over there and you get a nice spray. 
but when it comes to sand and my experience of cleaning cars over the years if you got like a a low pressure hose just a normal like garden hose it's the best way to clean because it lets all the sand just sort of dribble out instead of hitting with like a high pressure hose it just blows it in the parts that you're probably never going to get sand out of so i've just spent like the last 25 probably minutes or more cleaning this car but i am beyond happy about how clean it is it is insane that they've even got this here but just so you know as soon as you come off the beach i'll show you over here so this is the access track it comes into here and this is a big car park and then up the other end that's where you come in to the station itself just around to the left there is the office so as you're coming down onto the beach you come down and you chuck a left and you'll see this big bay right here you got enough for two maybe four cars but probably the hose will only reach two side by side but um oh man tell you what that was so satisfying <laughs> i am a really happy man right now definitely the cleanest the car has ever ever been so hot tip there is a wash down bay when you come to 80 mile caravan park make sure you check it out before you leave just to give the car a good old tub Hey, perfect. So Jada keeps finding these shells, which is just crazy. Oh, here's another one. Look how clear they are. They're almost transparent. You can nearly see through that. It's like glass. And they are just everywhere. These are I haven't seen any. I've never seen a shell like it. There's another one down there. There's, yeah, it's like shards of glass. I don't know if you can see it, but there's one just there. Wow. Where is it? It just goes to show like you can go from beach to beach to beach and still get totally different experiences like these shells I haven't seen yet and we've been damp here we've been, been to Broome like we haven't been too far down but from what I've been told the shells only get bigger and just more spectacular but well even back home you don't get anything like that it's crazy the native Shan sitting amongst the rocks getting the shots right yeah I just had this massive crab when I lifted this rocky <laughs> he went up here over there and then straight into where Sean is now it's like right next to her I got told that 80 mile has a lot of shells and you have to go when you get onto the beach go far left or go far right and you have to go a few kilometers otherwise you won't get this because obviously as you come out of the caravan park that's where everybody sits and they go through all the shells so it's not as many but if you go left or right it's just insane how many there are like you almost need to wear shoes there's that many shells i'll just show you like this is where i'm just sitting now look at them all just thousands and thousands of shells is going <laughs> talk about nature's playground for kids it's just they go crazy for hours he likes them eh he's eating them <laughs> he's eating my thongs <laughs> I'm out, I'm out. Don't start eating the tires, man. Take your walk. So Jada and I have been getting around today and we're collecting some shells and stuff. So look at the big bag. This is what they're full of. Yeah. So the shell that we're collecting, I'm not entirely sure what they're from, but they're like really shiny. What we're going to make from these is either going to be like a wind chime or a photo frame. I'm not entirely sure yet. We'll see how we go. But I just want to let you know, oh, it's so, so glary. I just wanted to let you know, um, I did some research. You're allowed to collect shells here. There are some protected areas. So just be wary of that and, you know, check your maps before you start taking shells away. But the other thing too, shells that look like this style. So they don't really have like a hole underneath them. That's the type of shell I would recommend you collect because another animal can't necessarily use them. So, 
you know, just be wary. If you're collecting ones that look like this, they're really, really pretty. But the other thing that lives here is hermit crabs. So hermit crabs can actually use these types of shells as their homes. So you're kind of taking away a chance for them to find what they want. So yeah, we've left those ones and we're just collecting these ones today so we can make something out of it. And then the other cool thing you can find here is, I think they call them an exoskeleton from a sea urchin. How cool is that? So again, an animal doesn't need this anymore. So that's okay. But yeah, try and avoid the ones that look like maybe a hermit crab could live in them. So kids, but if you're listening, you, avoid those ones. You can take these ones and the yeah. ones that we're collecting as well. In specified areas. Most of the beaches we've been on, there's hermit crabs, I mean, everywhere. Yeah. And we were being stalked by this humongous one. This is probably the biggest one I've seen. Yet. Yet. He's this whole travel. He, we had one that was down, hang on. Jada found one that was in the little rocks here. We pulled him out to try and have a couple of photos and whatnot with him. But um, he didn't want to come out of his shell, but as soon as he walked away, he took off and he went over this direction. And then we turned around about oh, 10 minutes later from the car here and looked back and there was another one just there. I was like, surely it can't be the same one. He's done like a full U-turn and come back. But it was a, we've just noticed he's a different one again. So this little guy, he was like beelining for us and then he realised we were there and he didn't really want to come too close. But look at the size of him. He's huge. You got my hand? He's nearly the size of your palm. He's getting better. He was very shy before, but now he's he's quite adventurous. Feel my hand. Oh, I'm a bit scared. I don't want you to get creative and try and bite me. Oh, he's got some big nippers on him. It's the only thing about these ones, the nippers get bigger and bigger. Oh God, they're big. Oh, he's like nearly hanging out. Oh, please don't nip me. <laughs> please don't nip me. He's scary. He's big though. Oh, he is bloody big. He's just such a nice shell. And this is, I was just saying before about how you shouldn't take shells because there's hermit crabs that live here. So as much as his shell's really pretty, when he outgrows this, he needs one that's bigger. And if we've taken them all, what's he going to live in? He's got no home. Yeah, he down. is a decent size. Oh, oh, sorry mate. <laughs> Rolly poly. He's cool. And you're off. What's he doing? You say hermit. It's like, just that moment there, it makes all this worth it. Because you would never, like, where do you see hermit crabs back home in Brisbane from where we're from? Like, it just, it just doesn't happen. You come here on the West Coast and there are like millions of them everywhere you go. It's cool to see them in the wild instead of just somewhere in a pet shop or something you just buy and it's like, there's no backstory. It's just a hermit crab and that's about it. You don't get much out of it. But to see them in a natural habitat, and you just see, you know, hundreds of thousands of them. It's just really cool. I can't wait to show these kids all these videos when they're older, just so they can appreciate how good they've got it right now. I wish I had this when I was a kid. It'd be nice to look back on your childhood, where you've been, what you've done. It's just, yeah. Technology's good for that side of things. And that's probably about it. <laughs> I woke up in the middle of the night mm -hmm, na, na, na. And I wondered how you're always right It gets me I couldn't see what you saw in me mm -hmm. But you showed me how to believe Still gets me When I look back I can see you're hiding Waiting for a moment to step in 
Location done, 80 mile beach. I actually really enjoy this spot because we get told so many times by people that have come through here and said you gotta stop here. And now we understand because we actually planned for two nights and we ended up staying three nights. So that yeah. should pretty much tell you how good it is. Um, you're really close to the beach. You're literally like a short walk just over the hill and then you're onto the actual beach itself. But then the beach you can- Beach access is really easy as well. For yeah, guards. super easy. You can drive just about anything you want up and down on there. And you just drive for miles and miles and miles. Yeah, it just it's just goes crazy. And goes and yeah, goes. but uh, apparently fishing's really good here. I don't know if we just you've just seen the, yeah. the quad setups here. They're pretty full on. Like staying out there until they turn into skeletons. <laughs> oh man, like I've never seen anything like that before. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, just all all in all, it's actually a really well put together park. Mm. The amenities are really cool. The shower and toilets. They feel like home. Hey, they've actually got a glass door. On them yeah, it's like that old school sort of feel. Like they get yeah. that. Oh, what would you call it? Like the frosted glass sort of yeah, door, and it's got the creamy, and... creamy, we uh, creamy edges and stuff. So <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Actually, it's cool. The site, the site we were on was one nine four, I think. I don't know. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure it's one nine four. I'll write it down the bottom if it was different. But that was yeah. actually a really big site, and the ones there were quite large. Yeah. Um, some of them are a little bit tight for the full family van, so just make mm. sure you give them your right measurements and stuff, so you get the right site when you come. Yeah, the first one we got to was a little bit short and our draw bar was going to be out on the road. So we just gave him a quick call, just yeah. said, hey, van's a bit big for this site. Is there any chance you can, you know, swap this around with something else? Literally, like, they're within really 30 seconds, they're like, yep, yeah, all right, we've got two sides here, just the other side. Go and have a quick look. We are just on the phone and said, yep, yeah, all right, we'll take this site, and that was it. Yeah. Done and dusted. So they're really accommodating. Really accommodating, But yeah. definitely, definitely stop in. This is a really good spot. The road on the way in is really wide. And it's, it's well maintained. They've got their own grader here as well, so they look after it every couple of weeks. So it's yeah. never too bad. And um, the office is great. It's got a little mini shop in there. There's ice cream. You know, the staff are Bakes, friendly. All that sort of stuff. Everything's green grass. Like it's level. It's, it's nice, a good spot. Yeah. It's it's everything you you yeah. want a caravan park. I understand why people rave on. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. So right. um, yeah, we're on to what Cape, Cape Cord Cordrin 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 Cordrin. I don't know. I don't know. All right, we'll see you in the next location. See you there.
Jesus! <laughs> this is blowing like crazy out um, here. We were gonna drone this morning and show you like the lovely scenery and everything and overnight it's just changed. We turned up yesterday and it was a primo spot. Yeah. I mean primo. It was amazing view. We're up on top of this hill. You can see the crystal blue water. <laughs> But then someone said, oh, there's going to be a couple of uh, days coming up that's going to be full of wind. Like, it's going to be some intense wind. And I oh, was yeah? like, I had a look on the willy, willy weather. Yeah. I said, yeah, it was going to pick up, but obviously had no idea how much. And yeah, this morning, like, the caravan was rocking. Yeah, it's We've, full on. I've had to put the awning away. Watch, just hang on, I'll open the window and watch Jack's hair. <laughs> look out the window. Ready? Whoa! <laughs> Ready? Whoa! <laughs> Look at the wind coming in! <laughs> oh, Jesus! We were just we were just sitting here inside watching a movie. It's been blowing most of the morning. <laughs> it's been blowing most of the morning, but now it's just started to rain as well. So it's all happening. We just had to grab the last few things from our side and put them in here. So at least we're sort of half packed. But the thing is, we were hoping to stay here for a couple of days and just sort of really take it in and, you know, show you guys exactly how cool this place is. It's really nice. It's just unfortunate we've had some really uh, average weather. Been pretty lucky because this is probably the worst weather we've had, oh, probably since we left Cairns, I reckon, wouldn't it? I reckon it? the only wind we've had like this was Catherine that time. Well, Catherine, yeah, we had that big dust storm and that, so it's been a long time, so I can't complain, really. But yeah, we're actually going to uh, take off sometime this morning. We'll probably finish this movie because we're all pretty invested in it. Zootopia, if you've never heard of it. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, we'll pack up a bit a bit later on and then we'll uh, we'll head on down south a little bit further. I think we're going to Pardu Station next, so yeah, it's a bit unfortunate, but it's Mother Nature, isn't it? It's the uh, nature of the beast. But uh, yeah, it is a cool spot. I'd love to come back here again if the weather's better. Um, oh, it's just, it is cool. You're gonna have to take my word for it because I can't really show you much otherwise. We wanted to drone today and we're like, oh, it'll only be a little bit windy. It should be fine. You could have probably droned yesterday, but we didn't know. Yeah, oh well. Look it up on Google. Actually, you ready? Watch this. This is what it looks like when you look it up on Google. Cool. Okay. <laughs> I hope you like that. <laughs> so yeah, we'll uh, we'll pack up shortly and we'll uh, hit the road again, and then we'll head down to Pardu Station and show you around there. <laughs> Jada takes a trip to the other side of Australia while we stay at the van and retrace our steps at two very amazing free camps. We four-wheel drive the caravan into place and try our luck fishing with the local cattle. We cook up a storm and show you how we do our coffee on the road. For the first time in quite a while, we get to keep warm by a fire. 